Well, that was a good song, Prepare Me a Sanctuary. And that was kind of our opening song. That is certainly something that, you know, preparation is, I think, an essence for anything. And it means that there is something in the future that you are preparing for. Today, this morning, we got up and we had to pack up things from Wednesday night and get all the equipment together, load the van, and then Anthony and I came here and we prepared the hall so that when those of you arrived, that the hall could be warm and it could be prepared and welcoming. We had to get all the equipment set. We had to get all of this, these little details here that are behind the scenes. And uh, certainly, I think, you know, everybody here appreciates the fact that these things just don't happen by accident. It's not like snap and everything's there. And there needs to be a bit of an effort there. And certainly when we look at the Bible, we can understand that there are many examples of the, the preparation and how the Lord has prepared the children of Israel for the promised land, how the Lord prepared the way for Jesus to come through John the Baptist, how Jesus said, I go and I prepare a place for you. Imagine. Now that's exciting when I just forget everything else. Wait a second. We don't have to do the preparing that God has done the preparing. Oh, well, hang on now. Don't, don't be too hasty there. There is some preparing that we have to do. We have to do some preparation. So it's like there's a wedding feast, there's a banquet, and what kind of things do we need? If we're going to have a big fiesta, Magdalena, what do we need? Paesos, right? We need, right? Clouds. No, no, we don't need clouds. But uh, we need uh, balloons. Maybe we need some balloons. Maybe we need some, some forks, plates. And, of course, we need some food, some carne, right? Pollo, meat, chicken, rice for the Filipinos, of course. Rice for any of us. We all like rice. So we're getting the meal ready. We're getting it all prepared. We've got to get the heat all set up. We've got to get the invitations up. We've got to send the invitations out so that people come. It's like a birthday party or a wedding banquet. And so the invitations are out. And some people come, some people don't. Some people send their regrets, and, and those that come get fed very nicely. And it's a wonderful entertainment, the music, all of the ambiance is there. And at the end, we feel really happy and satisfied. And the whole thing is, is that the meal is very short. You know, like like the result is very short. The, the wedding banquet is very short. But the preparation, or as some people say, it, you know, in different traditions, and, and uh, you know, they say the journey is the reward, is uh, what some other people will say. You might have heard that around. And, and I don't disregard that. I think that that is something that we understand, that as we were preparing for something, that the getting together, the fellowship and the planning meetings and all of the things that are, are preparing us for this big event can be very fun. Now, in the Lord, our ultimate goal, as we know, is eternity with, with Jesus. Eternity, ruling and reigning and, and living forever beyond this lifetime. So there are certain things that we need to prepare. We understand that Jesus has done a lot of the preparing. And now on our side... We need to be obedient to the word of God. The invitation is there. Many are called. Lots of invitations go out. We have sent invitations out to this whole neighborhood. We have witnessed to our family. We have witnessed to friends, neighbors, and other people. And why haven't they come? Well, they they neglected the, uh, the, the opportunity, I guess, as it were, to be here. And... Uh, they miss out. Oh, well, you know, maybe we could do some things, improve the music. Uh, well, we do our best, and maybe we could have more people here, more treats afterwards, or, or make it a, a, a fun and more exciting and eventful meeting to be here. But there are invitations that go out daily. 
We're not inviting them to come to a social club. We are inviting them to eternity, to salvation, to miracles, to healing signs and wonders that if you are sick and under the weather right now, in Jesus' name, rise up and walk. Carry your mattress. You're struggling. And you're having your challenge. But we have prepared a place where people can come, hear the word of God, and have their burdens lifted. Come unto me, all you that are heavenly laden, and I will give you rest. And I will give you hope, hope of a better future and a fun, exciting time. Struggles at time, but that's part of the enjoyment. If it was just all cushy and relaxed, you know, eventually we get bored. And so when we have these adventures, when we have these challenges, when we have these trials, it builds us up towards the ultimate goal of rising and meeting the Lord in the air. All right, Psalm 68, verse 10. Psalm 68, verse 10. All right, and the congregation that dwelt therein, thou, O God, hast prepared of thy goodness for the poor. You know, that means anybody out there, Anybody that is spiritually vacant, dead in their sins, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and there are people out there that are, are, are dead right now. They are poor in the spirit. And how blessed and how wonderful are they? There are people that are financially poor, destitute. But God has prepared a place for them that right now, this day, they can see the glory of God and be lifted up out of that situation and into a stronger, firmer ground that has been prepared for them. And these are certainly the things that we hope for. Now, the other thing, of course, is the preparation of the temple because God, and when we want to talk about our preparation, one of the things is that we have that vision, we have that hope, we have that discipline, we are here. And then along the way, we understand that the body is the temple. But before that, David is going to prepare things for Solomon to build the temple. And David really wanted to build the temple, but he was a man of war, a man that shed blood. And so God said, okay, I am not going to allow you or permit you to build the temple. You know, and of course, other things like the Bathsheba incident that came up. But out of the Bathsheba incident, where we see the ultimate low point of a man caught in sin and the forgiveness and the restoration of the Lord, which is a story that I could go through right now. But for the sake of time, if you are not familiar with that story, you'll have to look that up. But what we see is that David saw the Ark of the Covenant where God, the holiest of holies, was living in a tent from the time in the desert when the children of Israel met God. The first church, if you would, where the Holy Spirit came down and descended. It was a pillar of fire and a cloud that led and guided the children of Israel. That is the power and the glory of God led them through to the promised land, led them in their victory. And there it was, the Ark of the Covenant, the Ten Commandments, the budding rod of Aaron, uh, and it was there in a representation of the Holy Soul. It's the cherubims uh, on top of it, guarding it, as it were, guarding the Garden of Eden, if you go back to that story. But it didn't have a home. And David really said, you know, God needs a home. God needs a home, and we need to build a temple, and we need to have a place that can be a, a gathering point, as it were, a focus point where we can see the glory of God and all the symbolism that is going to be there. It was going to be adorned with, with gold and with cedar, and it was going to be almost like a, a Garden of Eden, a paradise there. And so they have a place all picked out, as it turns out historically, 
where the Dome of the Rock is today, the rock where Abraham was going to offer Isaac as a sacrifice before God. And so there it was, the place as it were, but God said, okay, David, you're not going to do it. But Solomon, as we said, remember that Bathsheba incident was something that shouldn't happen, but some good came out of it in that Solomon would be raised up. Solomon means peace, peace. And so there was going to be rest or peace from all the enemies. And so this temple was going to be a representation of peace and rest from the enemies. And so David, the man of war that shed blood, you're not going to do that. But David said, all right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to save up my money and I'm going to buy certain things. And I'm going to basically have a supernatural home depot right there with all the, the materials laid up so that this temple could be there. That's the preparation that was being made so that this temple could be there. And so in 1 Chronicles 22, 1 Chronicles 22, if you'd like to turn to it, 1 Chronicles 22, and in verse 1. Then David said, this is the house of the Lord God, and this is the altar of the burnt offering for Israel. David commanded to gather together the strangers that were in the land of Israel, and he sent masons to hew wrought stones to build the house of God. Like I said, we got like down aisle 15. We've got the masons and the rock. And David prepared iron down aisle seven, iron, iron in aisle seven in abundance. And the nails for the doors of the gates and the joinings and the brass in abundance without weight. And also the cedar trees in abundance for the Zidians. And they brought, and they of Tyre brought much cedar wood to David. And David said, Solomon, my son, is young and tender, and the house that is to be built for the Lord must be exceeding magnificent of the fame and of the glory throughout all countries. I will there, therefore now make preparation for it. So David prepared abundantly before his death. So this was the thing. That as David was not allowed to build it, he still took measures to make sure that things were prepared in this temple. And finally, in verse 10, and you can read down the whole story about why David couldn't build it. He shall build a house for my name, and he shall be my son, and I will be his father, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom over Israel forever. Now, that's prophetical of Jesus Christ. As we know that after Solomon, the kingdom was split, split. The children of Israel and the, and the kingdom of Judah uh, were split after that. And, uh, you know, again, Solomon ended up making some mistakes. But that doesn't take away from the fact that David had the vision and the planning to prepare I think for any of us, a lot of things we got to prepare for in life. A lot of things we got to prepare for. I'm going to prepare our meal for lunch tomorrow. Anthony's going to go home and take care of that today. We got to mow the lawn. We got to prepare for Jocelyn's trip to the Philippines. We got to prepare for retirement, maybe, so that we don't have to work until we die. We got to prepare for the the Church of God, the the outreaches by making sure that that our temple is uh, is well looked after, and the call for the people to to contribute towards this was was brought out. And so, in the time of Solomon, David had done quite a bit of the preparation. And now the people had to come together in the time of Solomon, uh, and they all came together so that that uh, the call was there and everybody gave and donated. And then they had the temple that was an example throughout all the world 
of God's glory. And people were, were convicted and understood that the children of Israel were the chosen people, the blessed ones. And, and again, knowing that down the road, through the lineage of David, would end up being Jesus Christ that would be the ultimate completion of the temple in that when the Holy Spirit was given out on the day of Pentecost, that our temple was now prepared to receive that glory. The body was now prepared to receive that glory. That's amazing. Think about that. Go. You know, do your sit-ups, do your push-ups, make sure you're, that's minimal in comparison to the glory of the Lord in your life. Now, we know that throughout the ages, as we say, God has prepared a lot of things. The, uh, the heavens declare the glory of the Lord. We know that everything on this earth was prepared in exact alignment so that things could be there. So we've got the temple, we've got the earth, the rotation of the sun around uh, in, in, and the, or sorry, the rotation of the earth around the sun, the rotation of the sun around in the galaxies and everything that is lined up just perfectly so that we could see the stars and we could have the navigation and we could have all of that, that we could have the seasons that we have. Right now it's a little bit cold. But uh, we look forward to warmer days ahead, unless you're in Mexico, and then we can hear how warm it is down there, Miguel. But uh, that, that's another thing. Psalm 74, 16 talks about this, just a quick one. And uh, this day is thine, the night also is thine, thou hast prepared the light and the sun. You know, the amazing love that God has for us. The light and the sun is there to warm us. Give us our vitamin D, right? Vitamin D. And, of course, we have the book of the law that is written. People go, oh, we're, we're under grace, not law. Well, the law is there so that we can learn about a better way of life. We can study the law, meditate on it day and night, and all of these things, and we can get into the Word, and we can understand it. Not that we're legalistic, but these things are there. And the one thing that God has promised is that uh, I'm preparing this wedding banquet for you. I'm preparing the mansion for you. But there are also some judgments that are out there. And people that refuse the counsel of the Lord or turn away from the invitation, there are, you know, some parting gifts for them. Proverbs 19 talks about that. And in verse 29, it says, judgments are prepared for scorns and stripes or whippings for the backs of fools. <laughs> that doesn't sound too good, does it? It doesn't sound too good. So rather than think about the, uh, the scorners and the fools, that are out there, which none of us are. Let's understand that in the day of battle, that safety is in the Lord, as it says in Proverbs 21, verse 31. The horse is prepared against the day of battle, but safety is of the Lord. Again, if we are in the house of the Lord, if we are here in the fellowship and the congregation of the saints, if we are out there rejoicing, singing the songs, testifying, loving one another, then we are in the safety of the Lord, right? And no matter what comes against us, God fights the battles for us. And that was the whole idea of the temple, was it would be a sign and a symbol that would bring rest and peace to the children of Israel, that throughout the entire land, there would be peace and riches and people came to see the wisdom of Solomon. We are only scratching the surface of what is held up for us. We are only brothers and sisters just now through the miracle of receiving the Holy Spirit, through the miracle of seeing people baptized, spirit-filled, raised from the dead, 
healing, signs, wonders, miracles happening daily, scratching the surface. And it says in Isaiah 64, Isaiah 64, and in verse 4, For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, nor perceived by the ear, neither have the eye seen. O God, beside thee, what he hath prepared for him that waiteth for him. So just like I said, David, David preparing all of the stuff for the temple where Solomon would now inherit the opportunity to build the temple. Everything Jesus has done is laid up for us. Everything is there. And we're only scratching the surface. Just pause and think about that. Wow, I've seen a lot of things over my life, traveling around the world, praying with people, seeing them miraculously heal. I've seen people instantly heal. I had my experience of being on a you know, a, a deathbed in the hospital and life support and being raised up victorious. Hallelujah. I've seen people come out of real, real tough situations and be blessed and put into safety. And all of that, I've seen revival where hundreds of people spontaneously receive the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues. The prisoners let out of prison to be baptized and receive the Holy Spirit. And yet, when I read that, we have no idea what is prepared for us. It's going to be like something beyond something else. Just imagine, Anthony, the biggest, most expensive buffet you've ever been at. Yeah, there we go. It's all about food again. But, you know, just whatever helps our human mind understand, you know, Whatever helps our human mind understand, it's going to be so much beyond that that we can't even see how good it's going to be. All we know is that we have a choice. We be there or the judgment. And like I say, I, I'm not one of those people that like to go on and on about it. But if anybody's listening there and you have not received the Holy Spirit and there is something in your life that is unrepented of that you need to work on, then I suggest come over and join the team of the Lord. Now, I say that because this is being recorded and somebody right now is listening to this at YouTube later. And that is the promise is that, look, we don't want to be harsh, but choose life or choose death. And as we said, we can talk about all these inconceivable promises that are prepared for you. But in the end, it's up to you. I don't want to I'm gonna go for a bike ride. Go hang out, walk in the park. Take my dog to the beach. That'll be fun. I like taking my dog to the beach, but I can at least spend an hour or two on Sunday with everybody here rejoicing in the things of the Lord. I like going out for dinners as much as anybody, but I like making sure that we pray I like vacations around the world, but I like making sure that they are focused on building up people there and preaching the gospel. So people have choices to make. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And if it's too difficult for people to follow the Lord, then we politely say, well, that's up to you. That's up to you. We can't force anybody to come to the kingdom of God. We can't force anybody to come to the banquet. All we can do is say, hey, bank. It's like, you know, do you ever see those like uh, guys with the signs on the side of the road waving it around? Come on in. Come on in. Right here. If you see a balloon guy out there with the like psh, fancy, fancy. Come on in. When we were in the Philippines, I can remember we were going to a hotel and there was this lady at the at the hotel next door that anytime we were coming in late at night, she would hold up like aircraft lights to try and and trick us to come into their hotel so that we would uh, uh, stay there rather than at the other hotel that was right next door. And uh, I remember thinking, oh, okay, well that's good. You know, they're trying to invite you in. 
get you into their place. Hosea 6, Hosea 6, verse 3. Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord, his going forth is prepared as the morning, and he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and the former rain unto the earth. The song we sing, it's the latter rain revival. We understand that the former rain came down. The Shekinah glory came down. The Holy Spirit came down. The seeds were planted. Missionaries went out. They preached the gospel. They gave people Bibles. They taught people about Jesus and said, come unto me. Come unto us. Join us. So the seeds have been planted. And now we are seeing in the last 100 years a revival that has never happened before where people are coming. And the harvest is plenty. Laborers are few. But the Lord has prepared it. It's coming. It's coming. So you remind people. Morning's going to come tomorrow. It will. The sun's going to rise in the morning. And from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. So we know that tonight the sun will set. And tomorrow the sun will rise. And we know that down the road there's going to be some rain. You can tell the seasons and the signs of the time. but Or you can tell the seasons, but you can't tell the signs of the times is what Jesus said when they were looking at all this. So all Jordan's meteorological charts can predict the weather. But can we tell the signs of the time? Brothers and sisters, it is getting late, and I'm telling you that we need to rejoice in the preparation. Rejoice in it. Be more excited about it as the day approaches. All right, we're going to go through a little bit of Matthew. Matthew chapter 20, Matthew chapter 20. And in verse 23, and he said unto them, you shall drink indeed of my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with, but to sit on the right hand and on my left hand is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my father. And scripture, of course, referring back to the question of, hey, can my voice sit on your right hand and your left hand? And Jesus said, are you going to be able to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized? And knowing that he was going to die for us. We're going to take the communion elements in a bit. And just as we think the preparation that was done as uh, he was whipped and beaten and went willingly to the cross to die for us. That's the ultimate preparation when somebody is willing to die for their friends or their loved ones. And in verse, in chapter 22, verse 4, and again, he sent forth other servants saying, tell them which are bidden, behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fatlings are killed and all things are ready. Come under the marriage. And people made excuses. I can't do this. I can't do that. I'm busy. You know, I bought a cow. I bought a piece of land. I got to go bury my father. I married a wife. And you read through it. People make excuses. People will always make excuses why they're not here. But you are here. And praise the Lord for that. You are joining us on Zoom. You have stepped up and made that effort. Wonderful. Bravo. Well done. Now let's find ways to continue to get together. Let's find ways to go out and share the, the message with them. And as we know, in the last days, there's going to be a lot of things that are going to be happening. And we'll open up to Matthew 25. Matthew 25. And we'll read through it a little bit. But the final judgment. Anthony Scott. Or, oh, you got the whole thing set up. Good, good lap. Well done. In verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come into his glory, 
and all the holy angels with him. Then shall he sit on the throne of his glory. So like I said, all of this is prepared. The preparation is there. The gospel has gone out. The opportunity to be baptized, to be spirit-filled, to walk in newness of life is there. And now we're talking about the judgment. And before him shall be gathered all the nations, and it shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, and the goats on the left. And then shall the kingdom say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the earth. Now that's wonderful. That is wonderful. For when I was hungered, you gave me meat. When I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. There's a measure of preparation and sacrifice by the brothers and sisters that are out there that have done that, that are charitable unto all the fellowship and the saints looking after each other, not coming to get their bellies filled, but coming unto the house of the Lord to say, what can I give? What can I offer of myself? Singing, praises, tithes, offerings, helping the visitors when they come helping the mission, helping the, the people that are, are in the far places, in Africa, in Tongo, where there's baptisms, in the Philippines, where Jocelyn's going to, in Mexico, where Miguel is faithfully holding up the banner, in all the places that are around. So this is what it's talking about. And uh, naked, you clothed me, when and when I was sick, you visited me. When I was in prison, you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer, saying, Lord, when saw we and hungered and fed thee and thirsty and gave thee to drink? When saw we a stranger and took thee in or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we sick and in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily or truly, I say unto you, in so much as you have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. This isn't about going out and and being way, way, you know, setting up soup kitchens or other things, but it is a matter of when you show up, are you ready to serve and help the fellowship? And that's a a, a humble calling that is there. And then in verse 41, then it shall he say to them on the way left, depart from me, you cursed unto everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Live forever, die forever, off into the fire it goes. For when I was hungered and you gave me no meat, thirsty you gave me no drink, the stranger you took me not in, naked you clothed me not, sick and in prison you visited me not, then shall... They also answered saying, hey, wait a second, wait a second, or Lord, when did we saw you hungry and thirsty, strange, naked, in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then he shall answer them saying, verily or truly, I say unto thee, insomuch as you did it not to one of the least of these, you did it not unto me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous, and this is the key, the righteous into it, life eternal, the righteous to life eternal. Now that's the wonderful news, the wonderful love of the blessed Redeemer way down in the depths of my heart. That song will be, it's right there, it's there, life eternal. Life eternal, living forever, flying around, rising, meeting, the, hopefully this is lifting people up, making people feel good. Maybe making people feel challenged. Yes, I know when we suddenly read all that about, oh, what, what do you mean? Uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. Well, step it up. Let's go. If we are feeling like there are things that we could be doing, let's do better. If we, But for the most part, everybody is rejoicing in the Lord, doing such as she can or she can within the ability that the Lord has given them. And that's the important thing. We don't want to be, uh, like you read earlier on that, and we've covered it off uh, through Anthony's talk and, and Jordan's talk and, and others about the, the, the faithless uh, person that took the one talent and hid it away. Oh, I don't know. 
I better hide it away because I heard you're really tough. Who told you that? Who told you I was tough? Or who told you that you were naked? Or who told you that you were broken? Who out there is telling that somebody that is baptized in the spirit building, the child of the living God, is sick and useless and unable to do anything? How dare they? You are a child of the living God. You are able to give of yourself. I just look at Angela every time I think of that and just how much she gives us each and every Sunday that we come here. As little as you have, Angie, and the music and the, the faithful giving of yourself. The, the time, and Angela does receive a little bit of a, a money, and she's always willing to offer and bring a sacrifice to the church. And it's just so wonderful and so blessed to see that. This warms my heart. So don't let anybody say that you can't do anything. Don't let anybody put you down because you're a child of the living God. And reserved for you is eternal life. And those workers of iniquity out there that seem to be getting away with it right now, don't worry about it. Pray for them because it's going to be hot where they're going. Hotter than Mexico. Hotter than Brisbane on a hot day. Hotter than Alice Springs in Australia. Hotter than Papua New Guinea. Hotter than Death Valley. The hottest place on earth. Justin and I happened to be there when it was one of the hottest days on earth in Death Valley. Thankfully, we had air conditioning. But yeah, we got out of the van and it was like, woo, that's warm. And all we thought about was, okay, we're not staying here. We're just passing through. Nice to get a little bit of sunshine, but we don't want eternal fire. We want life and life everlasting. That's what we have. And it's all prepared for us. Let's conclude in Revelation 21. Revelation 21, like I said, begin with an end in mind, know what is reserved for you. Revelation 21 and in verse 2. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. That's the conclusion you can read there about no more death, no more dying, no more tears, no more pain, the living in the light of God, the, the sun providing that, no more need for, you know, somebody pointed out to me, yeah, you talk a lot about buffets, but I don't think we're going to need to eat in heaven. Like I said, whatever makes you happy, whatever helps you understand just how wonderful it's going to be. The buffet's there, but we probably won't need to eat. Okay, fair point from a spiritual sense. But I like the fact that everything is prepared for us. We don't have to worry. No se preocupado, right? We do not have to worry at all about anything. That's what I like. So let's go. Let's get going. Just remember that you can do it. And if you're going through a trial, you're going through a struggle right now, we're together in all of this. We're all members and beloved of Jesus and part of the body of Christ. And all the people said, Amen.